and welcome to all watching painting this video actually want to start making a fairy diorama. Now, if you guys didn't see me unbox my asset drop for this month, it came with a bunch of fairies. It was the heroine box, so a bunch of female heroes, and in this case it was fairies, and it came with a, a bunch of stuff to decorate this base diorama to make it look like a kind of fairy, fairy grove. Some moonstones, some secret grove basing scatter, and then this portal of some description is it a portal i don't even know what you'd call that it looks a bit like a portal now i'm not quite finished doing my fairies i've i've started painting them up and i've sort of realized that i want to know where i'm going with this and what i'm painting them for and what sort of environment they're going to be in you can see i've added this some water so that makes me think i want to add some water this one's got a bit of a tree so a bit of a grove now that made me want to start doing the base and start working out what I want to do. Now, I don't have any sort of these stepping stones. I don't have any rocks that would fill that place. And I haven't got time to go and order some or wait and get some. So I think I think I'm going to just basically use a blank base here. Um, let me know if I've missed a trick, if there's an easy way of doing this. I haven't got any cork. I could build it up using green stuff, but I ain't got the patience, really. So I'm going to just alter the base. And given that... This looks like it's a dragonfly coming out of water. I'm thinking I want to add a pool of water to this. So that, that's that's where I'm going to be really going with this basing tutorial, I think. And and let's just get on with it. Let's uh, I'm going to designate an area of this. Should I just do it on the back so none of these lines show through? I think I think I probably will. Like why even have those lines distracting me? Now this miniature's about this big, and I'd like it to be sort of able to stand nearish this pool of water if not on the pool of water so let's make it let's let's get a pencil in fact finding a pencil is harder it would actually have been quicker to go to ikea and grab one but we've got one nevertheless that should do it so she's about that big so make sure i've got enough space for the pool of water for her and then for what i'm going to do you might have seen me use this in the past it's ready mixed filler you know this is a couple of pounds from pound well i think you can get it from poundland i think this is actually from wilkinson's something like that but oh what do you call it in the states spackle is it spackle paste or something like that i'm just going to squeeze some of this out i could almost have done it straight on the board now i could be using some of this to build up some 10 stones which i don't have but Nah, I'm not going to, but you could. What I'm going to do is build up a, a sort of lip, an edge, to be able to pull some water in here. In fact, I've got to be careful because for some reason I thought I was making this circular, but I actually don't want it to be. That was just the minimum size it needs to be. Let's just move that out of the way. So I think I'll have it stopping somewhere around here. So I'm just going to really just build up a wall. I accidentally don't want to go too close to the edge because I need some space to fill in some of the grove as well. I'm actually going to apply this directly to the workspace because I think that will give me the, the line that I want. Oh yeah, that's looking much better. Right, that should be enough of the filler. Now it's going to be about making a nice lip. I actually wanted to create a little bit more space here so I don't want it that close. Give them more space for the pool. Then it's about bringing this down so it fits. I don't, I don't, I want a, a nice ascension up to that mound so I can blend it with the flat surface more easily. And I start adding some of that scatter. Now let's just reinforce the actual pool. I want, I want that bit a little bit high so I can pull some water in here or make believe water. Now we're going to be left with something like this, a nice lip, so we can add some water to that in a little bit. We're going to have to let that dry, and it's probably going to take a good 24 hours, so I'll be back another day. While we are waiting for the filler to dry, let's paint up this portal now. As I mentioned, this did come in the asset drop box this month, so it's designed to work well with this fairy grove. And for it, I think I'm going to paint it up like it's some sort of rock. So I'm going to use Basilicum Grey, which is a contrast paint. It's going to be super quick, super easy, and barely an inconvenience. For this, I think I'm just going to apply it everywhere and then paint the details back in on these sort of runes and the gem at the top and that sort of stuff. Now, I have already primed this in Grey Seer. 
So that is the contrast based primer, which is supposed to make this better. But honestly, I'd, I'm not sure I noticed that much difference. So by all means, prime it with whatever and paint this properly if you want. I could very easily be using Necromancer Cloak by the Army Painter right now and then highlighting that up with a lighter gray. But this is just going to make it quite quick. And because it because this portal is rendered sort of 3D uh, textured is probably the word I, I want. This is going to work quite well with the with the contrast paint and it's going to seep into any of the cracks and pull away from any of the flatter areas, allowing it to have some highlights and some some recess shading as well. Oops. Oh no, dripping on my mat. That's why you have a mat down, guys. Anyway, I'll paint the rest of this up in this colour. So we're into the next day now and the portal is nice and dry. We'll be adding some details to that late, well, probably in a minute, but seeing as this is now dry and the next steps are also going to take some time to dry, we're going to crack on with the actual diorama base itself. And for the next step, we're just going to paint all of the sort of grassy area that I'm going to have. So this is going to all be grassy. I'm going to paint it nice and dark green and this is going to be a pool of water. So we'll just avoid that. So we're going to find a big brush and I'm going to use Army Painters, what's it called? Angel Green. I should know the names off by heart. So I'm just going to be applying a generous layer of this Angel Green over everything except the center of this pool. We are going to be mixing in some different colors and, and really this is just in case some of that scatter doesn't doesn't quite get the coverage that I want. I'm not expecting really any of this green to show except around this raised area where we're going to collect some water in this. So you're going to be able to see the green through that. So I'm going to put more effort and care into the bit around this raised area, but the flat area, hopefully you, we won't see any of this, but this is just in case and it's going to be easier and it's a quick process anyway, but it's going to be easier to do now than try and fix areas where just the scatter is just a little bit sparse and you can see the base underneath. But yeah, let's just go whiz around this with a dark green. Once you've given that a good base covering, you're going to have something like this. I'm not even going to wait for this to dry. For the next step, I'm just going to make it look a bit more natural and have variation in the greens. So I've got a bunch of my army painter greens here. I'm just going to be getting them and just sort of blending them and mushing them together. So for this bit, I'm not I'm not too fussed about where it goes. I'm primarily going to be working on this raised part because that's the bit you're going to be able to see. So I'm making the camera bounce, sorry. I'm leaning on it and just dabbing this on, and that is what I'm doing. I'll try and show you in an area where it's obvious what I'm doing, but really I'm just mushing this on a bit Bob Rossi, you know, just happy, happy little bushes. And it's all I'm doing is adding variance. I'm not trying to make it look particularly good. I'm not trying to do it very skillfully or anything like that. I'm just going to be going through all the colors, and just taking different different shades of green and just adding them. And as I mentioned, it's really this raised bit I'm going to care about because that's the bit you're going to see. The rest should, in theory, and hopefully just be covered by scatter. But yeah, just adding different dabs of this green all over just to make it look like different colors of green on the undergrowth. Now you could easily just adding some blues as well, some turquoise, some very pale greeny blues, They're all gonna work well too, given this, this the scatter we're gonna be adding later on. But hopefully you can see that, you know, it's not, it's not accurate or amazing work, but imagine once this is mostly covered, you're only gonna see the odd little bits. I think this is about where I want it. And while that's drying, we're going to use some matte white to base the inner part of the pool. And this white's really just going to be so we've got a nice easy base to paint up from. We're just going to be adding some pale blues, so white's going to be easy to work from there. So we'll just paint the whole inner side. And again, it doesn't matter too much if you go over the green as long as it doesn't make it sort of... Well, in fact, it doesn't even matter if you make it a pale green. It's just going to look like variation in the in the undergrowth and if you get it white we're just going to make it part of the pool. Now I'm not watering down any of these colors because I've not primed this board and this board is slurping up the paint. You could prime the board if you want but personally I've just never had a problem with, with it slurping up a bit more paint than I would like. It's easier that for myself than going outside and priming, priming it. I'd rather just waste a little bit more paint than the prime. I, mean, I, I guess I'd waste primer though. So it swings in roundabouts, but yeah, I think a lot of people recommend priming MDF boards, but 
I've, I've never primed any of mine and I've not had an issue yet. Now I'm going to wait for this to dry and add a second coat just to give a smoother finish. Once the pool priming layer sort of is all dry, we're going to move on to painting in some water. And for this, I'm just going to take a mixture of Army Painters light blues and this sort of turquoisey color. So we've got Void Shield Blue, Elemental Bolt and Light Denim. And I'm going to just get blobs of these and mix in a heavy amount of water. We're talking more water than paint, I would say, probably only about 30% paint or something. And I'm probably going to start with the elemental bolt and give that as the primary base layer. So that's roughly what the color of the pool will be. But it's going to be super thin, so it hopefully won't show through. And then I'm going to just mix in some swirls of these lighter blues. So I've got a very, very wet brush here. Just going to mix that into this sea green that we've got. You can see it's almost dripping. That's how thin I want this layer to be. I'm going to use this as the base, so it's going to be over all of this white area. Although I don't, I, I don't mind at all if some of the white shines through. Even on the edges, it would kind of look like it's just foaming a little bit like water might do. I don't even mind this being a little bit patchy. It can be darker in some bits, lighter in others. I'd like the brush strokes to not be in it, so we'll try and work those out once I've got an even layer. Even adding a little bit more water now to let it sort of run and pool itself, and that's going to help me alleviate the brush stroke problem. Won't be able to see brush strokes if it just pulls and runs where it wants. So something like this, a greeny bluey pool. Then I'm going to take some of this void shield blue nice and bright and just start letting that sort of mix itself in. So none of this has dried yet. And then the same with this light denim. We're just going to get some wet blobs of that and just to allow it to mix in. That's not wet enough. We'll get that nice and wet. Just another shade of blue. Not a massive fan of how that's looking. It's gone a bit purple, hasn't it? I think it's mixed with the green, so I'll probably work that out. But for now, just to demonstrate, just mixing in some different colors, blues and this sea green. And we'll, we'll work up from here. While we're waiting for that pool to dry, we're gonna use a little bit of Army Painters Bright Gold. And that's, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to working on this portal. I'm gonna start painting in these runes Nice and gold. Now I've owned an art about what colour to do the runes for a while. A nice light blue would be quite cool, but then I'd feel like I need to do some sort of highlighting, maybe even OSL on that, almost like the runes are glowing. And I've done that in the past. You can find videos on the channel where I make blue glow. Looks pretty cool. Would certainly look cool here, but it's going to be quite time consuming. And I think if you want a nice easy way out, just painting them gold, maybe even silver, would, would do quite a lot of the trick for you because it's going to add that sort of glowy shiny effect anyway so and gold and grey looks nice so I'm going to go around and paint up all these runes I'm not even being that careful I don't mind if it's a bit hit and miss like it's been out in this forest for a while I'm also going to paint up this surround of this gem but also the gem as well I'm going to use some gemstone paint later on and I think gold underneath will work quite well with that so I'm going to be painting this the same here and that's roughly how you can get your portal looking. It's pretty swish. Only took a couple of minutes, but let's get that gem some color. And for that, I'm going to use Citadel's technical paint. This is a soul stone blue. It's for painting gems, and that's a gem. I've not used it in a while. and I've just been shaking this up for about 200 hours. So hopefully it'll still work. But the idea is you get some on your brush and you paint the gem from the bottom. Need more than that, from the bottom. And drag your brush up and that's going to leave most of the paint at the top the darkest bit should be at the top where the gem normally is slightly darker this is going to have a nice glossy finish as well a very shiny gem that dries and we'll do the, exactly the same with the other side pull it at the bottom and drag it up though it seems to be doing what it wants this time the pool's been drying, it's just about there now. Now that's looking pretty swish. I think it looks a bit like a mystical, magical, grovey pool, but I would like it more blue, I think. So I'm just going to go back and add some more Void Shield Blue. That's the brightest blue that we had. So we'll have some of this. And I'm also going to mix in some swirls of just matte white now, really lightening that up. We're going to do the exact same process, so get a nice wet brush. So that's two dollops of water in this, so basically a third of the paint. And then let's just add some of this, lighten up some of the areas into a paler blue. Again, trying to get this wet enough that really the paint does the work for me. It's just going to move itself around. 
And then we're just going to add a splash of the white as well into that. Added way too much and really need that to blend in a lot better. Do so by just adding more water to a clean brush. And we'll leave that to dry. Hopefully I've just made it a bit more blue, a bit more water-like. And once, once it's dry, we'll see how that's all come together. So that soulstone blue on the gems dried and I just was not in love with it. So re-primed it nice and white again. I'm gonna this time I'm gonna try the contrast Talisa blue. And I think that's gonna work a lot better. Just looking at how the gemstone paint took to this gem, it just feels like a contrast paint's gonna work really well here. It's already more vibrant, which is kind of what I want. I want a nice vibrant gemstone so i'm just going to give this one thick coat and let the contrast paint do the work I might have to touch up the gold afterwards we shall see do this on both sides but i'm happy with this already and it's not even started to do what it does so while we're waiting for the blues to dry and the gems to dry we're going to move on to adding the moonstones to the base you might have noticed i'm down to two moonstones now sophie my four-year-old daughter found them and decided one of them well, actually, all of them had to be her unicorn food, but I let her have one. I'm a generous god. Um, where should we pop these? I think we're just going to scatter them on. But I'm roughly wanting the portal to be here. I think this one on this edge somewhere here. And maybe this one's sticking up over here, something like this. And we'll get these in place before I start adding that scatter, because I'm going to have to work around these slightly. And to do so, we're just going to use some super glue. So this is the Army Painter super glue. I'm just going to take the gem and where was it? Well, ideally you want to put this where it was in contact with the board, but it's. I'm just going to do a nice coat all underneath and hope some of it holds. Pop that into position, let that dry. The same on this one, just a little bit of glue underneath and then into a position and then let, let, leave them to dry with the rest of the paint. Should add, and while I'm here, let's glue the portal down because we, we want to build up that scatter around it like these things have been there longer and the the fawnage has grown around it. So just a dab of glue under each of those and I'm going to put this as far into the corner without it overshooting the board as I can about there. Right, we've all dry, all glued on. Gems looking better, very vibrant. And then this is nice and dry as well. So the next bit is I want to fill it in this pool. And for that, I'm going to use some epoxy resin. Now this is Gorilla Epoxy. It's, it's actually quite expensive and I've not used this before. I'm a little bit concerned this yellow is not going to dry clear like I want, but we're going to find out in a minute. Normally I use Poundland, that's one pound in the UK, it's the dollar store epoxy resin, and it dries completely clear and it costs you next to no money. This is a little bit expensive actually, but it's all I could find since we've moved house. No idea where my cheap stuff is. Got it all over my hands. Get a cloth nearby to wipe your hands. So I'm going to apply this direct to begin with at least. So I'm going to squeeze out an even amount of each side of the epoxy resin. I'm going to guess that's an amount. Oh, you couldn't see it, beg your pardon. But you can imagine what squeezing two tubes looks like. So that's going to squeeze out half and half. Now, by themselves, it doesn't really do anything. But once you mix them together, it's going to start forming a, a hard bond. So I'm, I've got a little cocktail stick and I don't even need to be that careful mixing it together because I don't care about the gluing aspect of this. I just want it to mix and dry hard and clear like filling in the water in this pool. So I've not added enough here because that's only in the center of the pool and I really want it to go right up to the edges. So let's add some more. This is the very reason I wanted to use cheap dollar store epoxy because it's going to use quite a lot in a pool this size and this stuff wasn't cheap so it's costing costing me pounds guys pounds check out the patreon support the channel let me waste my money gluing gorilla glue to this base right this is looking a better pool so again i'm just going to mix it together using this cocktail stick carefully as to not scratch the paint underneath because i, I want that to stay as it is and that's going to give the color to this look at water pool and this epoxy resin is going to give the sort of look to it actually being shiny and clear so it doesn't even matter if i mix any air bubbles in that's not going to be really a concern i'm just hoping to not splash this out over the top although you know that's realistic pools do overspill and and water runs out of them but 
let's hope I can keep it all inside. So yeah, as, as I mentioned, air bubbles don't matter. Give it a good mix because it will just dry a lot faster if it's fully mixed. This one actually says it sets in five minutes. I'm not sure they imagine me creating a massive pool like this because I don't think this will be setting in five minutes. But well, this is the last long step really. This is probably, I expected it to take 24 hours, but we'll see. Um, I will just be leaving this now on the side to dry. I should just mention, as this starts to set, if you wanted, you could add ripples into it. You could get a straw and add like circles as though something's just a bubble's popped up or a fish or something like that. In this particular case, I want perfectly still water. So I'm going to just let it completely dry and do its thing and I'll be happy with it flat. But just wanted to mention that as it, as it does set, you can add some textures if you would like. Right, I left that to dry for a good number of hours. I actually just left it for a few days. So I'm back now and guys love it the one thing i should mention i think i've said don't you don't need to worry about mixing it i wasn't going to worry about mixing it too much heavily mix it guys that was it that was it. ignore ignore what i said there it needs to mix properly to set correctly you can see just on this corner i've not quite mixed it well enough up in this corner i needed to stir it around more and more so ignore what i said mix this thoroughly preferably if you can mix it off of it and then pour it on you're gonna have a, a better time but I did it as I did it and ignoring this little bit here look at that beautiful looking water from all angles oh it's got air bubbles in it as well which you might like or might not like but I, I kind of like it as you look close it just looks like things are bubbling up who knows what's in this water but very cool look at that <laughs> love it anyway guys next step we're going to do the final bit and that is going to be using the acid drop base works core supplies Anyway, secret growth basing scatter. So I'm just going to be gluing this to the base. So we're going to start by, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this because I don't like the mix. I mean, I love the mix. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> what I don't like is the spread, I guess, of the mix. I think it's just kind of settled. And this bag is so full, which props to acid drop. They actually give you as a fuller bag as they can. Um, but I feel, feel like it's settled in a way that I don't, I don't love. Oh, I can't get this box open. So just going to, Get the fairy box that came with acid drop as well get this out of the way and i'm gonna i'm gonna pour wow this is gonna end in disaster isn't it let's find out i'm gonna pour this grove mix into here just so i've got more space to work and hopefully i can shake it up yeah there we go we've got a little bit more space and i'm just gonna be able to either pick out bits that i want or what i'm hoping here we go seal it back up there we go got, got that little bit of space to now work it around just get oh, oh be careful that it's, oh, it's you can't see but it's it's going it's not quite as airtight as i want so but i'm going to go away and mix that up a load anyway just to give a better scattering as a wall but I, th I might be a bit picky anyway with exactly what i'm going to do but we'll we'll see we'll see shortly so we are going to want to use some pva glue and i'm going to just apply that all over everywhere we want this scatter to be oh, this is so full of air strength of the bear but yeah, we're going to get a load of glue out. Probably want a lot more than this, but for demonstrational purposes, if you require it, we will do that. Just wipe the nib of the glue with this brush. And then we're just going to take a fairly big brush. I'm actually going to get a little dab of water, a little dab of water, move away from the microphone, just to water this down just a little bit. Not much though, because I would like it quite thick. So plenty of the basing scatter material sticks to it. But I'm just going to work this on all of the grassy parts of this base so i'm nice nice and covered and then we can apply some scatter and with that glue evenly spread well it's not even evenly it's just all over it doesn't really matter big bits here little thin bits there but it's just going to add a mix to applying the scatter now i'm choosing to apply some of these moonstone broken up crystals i'm going to make a kind of path leading to that portal from sort of off the side put a bit of this heather this big bushy component over here and i think other than that i'm just going to start sprinkling it all over the all over the diorama i think i'll just have a mix of everything i'm going to maybe place a couple of stones just down here build up the edge there but fundamentally it's just going to be a mixture of everything except for this sort of path that i want to build to the port i'm not even really sure why i'm building a path just make something interesting out of it and just make sure you can be a little bit precise if if i if i want to if i need to be and i don't necessarily need to be and it might just be argumentally argumentally argumentatively 
arguably that's the word it might be arguably better just to sprinkle it all over evenly like this and just get mixed throughout the base i'm really 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 liking this um this scatter mix it's probably my my favorite ever so nice work um definitely enjoying this but you can really see now adding this final bit to the diorama or the base it, you might you could do exactly the same as this with a base obviously if you're just basing a 25 30 mil miniature you are gonna you are gonna struggle uh, getting this much detail on it but this scatter will work on just a single base miniature and you'll get this sort of mystical scenic grove very very cool magical area i think i'm going to be looking for some miniatures from other games to to use this basing basic material on. let me know in the comments below if you can think of a game or a particular miniature that this would would suit and that i could do in the real world per se because i don't often make dioramas although this is going to be a centerpiece on my shelf once this is complete but yeah i think i'd like to do this in some real games once you've got enough on you can just tip it back into the box or mostly back into the box got some on my mat make sure you put the mat down so you can easily scoop this back into the container once you're done and then we're going to leave that to dry right there we go it's all completely dry now and i have to say i'm well impressed with that scenic grove basing material by acid drop i wonder if you can pick that up individually from their site because i want more of that i want to cover more of it we're so quick and easy and look at that range and I even controlled it a little bit getting this little path through here which maybe shouldn't have even bothered i think it would look beautiful without so that is the base completely finished i'm enjoying the water nice and reflective nice and shiny and these stones look great now the last thing to do i guess is to put the the miniatures the fairies on i've not based her yet but i just do the same a bit of glue on her and then use this scenic material i think she'd look great um so i've painted these up both of them as though with the base still black as though you could still play it in the game and i'm really on the fence about whether i should just stick them to the diorama because it's just i think it makes them stand out a bit like they're not part of this which is which is unfortunate but i've made it so you could go and play the game and you could have these on display off the game so it's up to you guys you obviously don't need to do that and you might not even be painting these exact miniatures or making a diorama you might be doing some other basing for a fairy based game or a scenic grove like this so um i'm half and half but i think the colors work really well with it as well these reds have gone really nicely with the greens and the blues in the background i think i'm just going to go away and debase these because i'm not going to play this game so let's just get them off the base and let's glue them to here but by all means that's what it looks like if you don't glue it to them they do sit quite nicely on it and look like they belong here but let's just let let's i'll, I'll do it for you and then you can decide whether you want to attach them or not so back back with them glued on and that's it guys that is the diorama the base the scenic grove fairy base completely finished and i'm super stoked with how that came out i think it looks really really good especially with how quick i produced such a such a base this really wasn't very time consuming there was a lot of time waiting for parts to dry but actually building the base gluing everything together and making it look as cool as it does now was very very straightforward very very quick and easy and i think this can be applied to much more than just a fairy scenic grove i can see a lot of fantasy basings being used using these materials now all of these materials were put together it was carefully created cu curated can i even speak bro by acid drop i'll leave a link in the description below for the for the website so you can check it out it's a monthly subscription service and they send you products to make a diorama to enter the competition i'm going to be entering the competition with this piece and fingers crossed it might be good enough to win but yeah hopefully you can apply this to all sorts of things and nice one acid drop for for passing a good few hours and helping me produce something that i've really really enjoyed hopefully more people out there can get some thing out of this tutorial let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll catch you again next week